What's good, y'all? Elvis here. I'm finally doing it. It's a tutorial. Get straight into it. So it took me long enough, but I finally got y'all with a tutorial. We're gonna be doing a mid ball fade, keeping it dark up top with a one and a half. This is actually one of my more difficult clients to cut because he has, you can't tell from the video right now, but he has a cowlick in the front and his natural growth pattern on the sides makes it more difficult to fade him than most of my clients. But basically you saw we were combing the hair and now we're cutting the top down with a one and a half. Around the crown, I usually go with a one and a half open or a two close just because I like to leave it longer because it doesn't lay down in one specific direction like the rest of the hair. So if you cut to the same length, it can seem like you patched them in his crown and that's not the, that's not the move of waves. All right, so here we're putting in our initial guideline with the clipper closed and with my fade process I don't like to put in every guideline first and then blend them I like to put in each guideline and blend them as I go. So on this side I'm going to do like fade it that way but on the other side i'm going to put the guidelines in then blend them out but before anything i like to put my first two guidelines in around the head just so i have a good uh, base and i already know if my guidelines start off even then the fade is just going to naturally fade even but i wouldn't be too worried about putting the guidelines in as neat as possible 100 percent because as long as the general placement's good, you're gonna be blending all the lines out anyway. So I wouldn't say this is the time to be a perfectionist. All right, so with our guideline connecting the back, we're gonna be starting with our second guideline. And I'm gonna be putting this in with the clipper open, just following the guideline I put previously going up. I don't like when people say, you know, measurement like half an inch it's really kind of arbitrary it depends on the fade you're going for and the the person's head shape and a bunch of different factors but i i guess half an inch would be a good guesstimate number though or measurement rather but we're just gonna be connecting this all the way around to the other side of the head Here, very important, you wanna make sure the guidelines match up before you start blending. But now we're blending our first guideline out, basically playing with the clipper, open and close, making that line disappear. I low-key don't like this angle because it's kinda of hard to see the subtle flick of the blade off the scalp. But of course, when you're blending, it's a scooping motion. It's, it's really subtle, so it's hard to see but that's what's happening it's not just me pushing it right up onto the scalp but i'm gonna speed this up because it's not that eventful i really like blending the guidelines out as i put them in because it allows me to really really focus on make perfecting the blend in a specific area and then when i have to blend multiple areas together to form the blend that is the whole haircut it just comes out so much cleaner to me So here we're putting the next guideline in. These are my Andis Super ZR2s. They're dope detachable blade clippers. I have a one and a half blade on there that generally equates to a half guard or a zero guard, depending on Andis or a wall or whatnot. Here I'm actually blending out the guideline with a different clipper that I put it in with. I could have used a half guard or a zero guard to blend this area out, but I actually hate using those guards now. I love blending this area out with my masters, no guard, and just play with the, the blade open. Most or a lot of barbers I talk to don't actually know you can skip a half guard. It takes a little bit of technique and a little bit of finesse, but you can blend from no guard open into a one. All 
All right, here we got the next guideline with uh, one guard open. And what I'm doing differently here is I'm not trying to put in, an, in a definitive line. I'm really trying to start the process of blending the side into the top. All right, and you're starting to see this blend come together, but you're gonna see me throughout the video peri periodically go back and re-blend certain problem spots and you're going to want to keep detailing through the process of your haircut because detailing is what makes a good cut a great cut that's the differentiating factor all right but here i'm using a one and a half guard open to blend the top and the sides and then i'm going to close it and now we're going to go with the grain just to smooth down some of the the bulk Gotta make sure you dust your clients off. Gotta keep them comfortable. All right, on this side, we're doing the same thing, but with the blend on this side, I put the guidelines in initially and then started blending them. But this is just for the video. So just like I like to blend in my guidelines as I put them in, I like to blend the different sides of the head separately. And why I do that is just because it allows me to pay more attention to the details within each, within each section. And then the whole thing comes together a lot cleaner. But then, uh, so basically blending out the, the back of the first guideline and I'm basically extending it, extending the fade back over the side that I already faded. And I've realized that whenever I fade the same area more than once from multiple directions it just always comes out like a new degree of blurry but now putting in the second guideline in basically rinsing and repeating but just making sure the as i blend the back it blends into the sides i'm also doing the same thing on the other side but i just didn't show that side All right, so here I'm blending the second guideline out with the uh, Andis Masters no blade or no guard open. And theoretically, I could have just put in the guideline with this clipper open, but I like to use my detachable blade clippers for guidelines most of the time because they're more powerful and tend to cut the hair more evenly. So I like to also just take the strain off my adjustable blade clippers for fading because over time, using one clipper for everything just puts excess strain on it. And these are products manufactured with planned obsolescence in mind. Like they're made to be replaced and rebought over and over again. So might as well save yourself some money and just add to the longevity of the tools that you're using. Here we're putting in the next guideline with the one guard open and by this point you're we're really starting to see the fade come together and uh something that I, people ask me about sometimes is the hair that i leave at the bottom of the fade i used to just cut it off first because that was kind of satisfying but over time, I found it more satisfying to do it afterwards. But then also an added bonus of having that hair there is I, it kind of provides a, a level of contrast when I'm looking at my fade and comparing to see if there's any dark spots and if the, the blend is smooth around the contour of the head and whatnot. It just allows me to get a, a more detailed perspective. So here we're blending the sides into the top with a one and a half guard open. And by this point, we're really done with the fade. It's just uh, smoothing down the bulk, connecting the sides with the top. I don't know if you can tell, but the 
the recording of this tutorial was low-key rushed so this is more of a tutorial about how I specifically cut hair or how I would say to cut a fade efficiently rather than a step-by-step -step guide on how to like the steps on how to do a fade tutorials like that will come but this is really just my process but right here prepping for the lineup I'm trimming the front down with a one guard open and then I might close it a little bit in certain spots you really just want the hair on the line to be long enough to appear dark but short enough to lay down here I'm wiping his line up and his beard line with rubbing alcohol to get any grease or debris off and have a clean surface we're drying it and now I came back with uh, some holding spray on a paper towel just to freeze the hair in place all right, so now we're on the lineup. You know, just starting from the middle, working to the side that uh, the corner that goes further back, then making the other side match, essentially. Here you can see me uh, as I'm lining them up, I'm leaning back to look at the lineup from different angles. And when I was a beginner, I used to be super nervous to do this because it was a running gag that, you know, if your barber had to keep checking your haircut, that you were getting messed up. But now my clients got confidence in me and they appreciate my attention to detail. Now we're hitting the lineup with the razor. And this is what I consider to be a rough draft of the final lineup and similar to how I fade in steps and come back to it and refine. I'm going to do the same thing with the lineup. I'm making sure here to stretch the skin and technique is very, very important when working with a straight razor because you could hurt yourself, you could hurt your client. You want to make sure your technique on point. So we hit his beard line with the razor. And here is the rough draft of the lineup before refinement, before enhancement, before anything. This is a crucial step for every ball fade. I put in my initial guideline with my clippers closed, but they're not zero gaps, so I have to blend out that bottom line and here I'm using my trimmers for that. And if I was to just skip this step and cut the hair at the bottom of the fade off, there'd be a hard line of demarcation and it would really just kill the appearance of my fade. This would be considered one of the more risky techniques for cleaning up strays. I like it, but if I did not have good hand stability and hand-eye coordination, I would not recommend it. I also like cleaning up strays with the curb shears, mainly because they're effective, but also the sound is so satisfying. Oh, but I didn't get to record it, but I also put enhancement on this cut. I was kind of rushed because this was kind of spontaneous. I was just in the middle of an appointment and it actually ended up making me late. But here you can see the finished product is slightly enhanced. I like my enhancement to be kind of natural, questionably natural. Like, does he have it? Does he not? You can't tell. If you enjoyed that video or got some value, please go ahead and like and subscribe. If you haven't already followed me, check me out on Instagram at Cuss by Elvis. If you want more videos like this, comment down below, let me know. But I appreciate y'all. Till next time, Craft Over Clout, I'm out.